Are you that person who takes a million and one selfies every day? Are you the person who has constantly got their camera or their phone out, taking photographs and being shouted at by everyone around them? Are you the person who loves to edit or would love to be able to edit? Do you want a career in photography? If so, this could be the course for you. Photography is a very popular course to choose at GCSE here at Lutherland High School. It's a creative course and we do tend to get excellent results for the students. This is through hard work, determination and dedication. While studying GCSE photography, you will have the opportunity to research lots of different photographers and draw inspiration from them to impact on your own photographs. You will learn the technical inner workings of the cameras, such as shutter speeds, apertures and ISOs, and what they do and how they impact on your images. You will also learn how to use Photoshop and edit your images to manipulate them and improve them. But what you do need to bear in mind, that is not all practical work. There is folder work, there is information you'll need to analyse imagery and write about them in your own words. So please bear that in mind before choosing this option. In photography, you will also learn how to use the photography studio independently, which is really important at GCSE. As well as that, you're going to be photographing each other as part of the portrait topic. Um, the four topics that we actually study at GCSE are close-up, portrait, landscape and cityscape. Hi everyone, so what I've done is I've just got one of our students from year 11 um, to just talk you through what they do and what the course is like. So if you don't believe me, then you can ask one of the year 11s. Okay, so thanks John. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what we do in photography? Well, for starters, when you first come to photography, you learn how to use a camera. The DSLR camera. So you learn about aperture, uh, depth of field, maximums, ISO, shutter speed. You learn how to like take the camera apart and change your lens. So you can use a macro lens. John, do you want to show them how you would take the lens off? Uh, there's a button on the side, so you hold it down. And you twist the camera lens and you pull it up. Okay. So what? Why do we take them off? Have we got others or? Yeah, we have macro lenses which are used mostly for close up. So that leads into your first project in year seven. Year. <laughs> year ten. <laughs> year ten. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, where you can take pictures of objects predominantly on the table, or in some cases in the studio and you can like take pictures of flowers, marbles, whatever you can think of. Okay, so what John's doing now, he's just gonna show you some of the photographs he's done for his close-up project. Um, so if you wanna talk us through what you chose to do for your close-up project. In year 10, I chose to do flowers because I just thought they have like a good natural composition with like the spiral inwards which helps for your composition. And then I've also chose to do water droplets because it also shows movement, which is a good thing that you can capture. So did you do, did you start with flowers and then develop onto water droplets? Uh, no, I actually started with cans. Okay, you got some of these to show? Yeah, oh. sorry, wrong button. So I started with cans and capturing movement of the water. And then I captured cans dropping into water, which leads on to more movement. But then I did choose flowers in the end. So does that then just, so the reason, so you start off with the cans, which were John's test shots, is that yeah. right? Okay, so why do you do test shots first? Do test shots in case anything goes wrong for your final shots, so you have like a bigger, better plan for your finals. And you can experiment with your test shots and do whatever, which is why I swapped when I was going to do my finals, because I didn't really see where it was going with the cans. Okay, so there's always room for development, and yeah. even though your photographs, they may not be what you wanted originally, you will still pick marks up for those, is that correct? Yeah. 
the more test shots you have, the better it bumps up the marks. Excellent. So then, we, if we move then on to um, what's the next project to do after close up then in year 10? You do portrait. Um, there's many different topics within portrait. There's sport photography, fashion photography, surreal photography. What's surreal photography, Dan? Surreal photography is like not real photography, so I have an example. So like unnatural. Of, uh, okay, so if I just zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Okay. So how have you done that? What software did you use, John? I used Photoshop, which is, as you will learn in year 10, you'll get to know Photoshop so well. You use it all the time. I used layers to make Eliza have two faces, basically, <laughs> which is surreal. Yeah. And then what's another type of photography that you can do within portraits? So you've got surreal. You can do fashion photography yeah. where people are modeling for clothes. Yeah. Portrait photography is where photographers make most of the money. Yeah. It's like competitive business. It is. Yeah, it really is. Um, okay, so once we finish portrait, towards the end of year 10, we go on a trip. So what kind of trips have you been on with photography? We went to Formby Woods, we've been to Lunt, we went to town at night. Yeah. We were meant to go to Wales, but COVID happened. <laughs> yeah, no, no. So no. you guys will get a better trip than we did. Um, so in terms of landscape, what is landscape, if you had to explain what it is? Landscape's like photography of their uh, normal, natural environment. Basically, you just like take pictures of outside where yeah. no one is. So what are the kinds of skills that you're looking at when you're doing the, um, the landscape? You want to be able to use ISO properly so your photos aren't overexposed or underexposed. Yeah. You need aperture to capture a maximum depth of field, which a maximum depth of field allows you to see further into the background of the image. And then you need to be able to adjust your ISO and your aperture for if you want to do close-ups of like trees. Yeah. And what kinds of compositional techniques do you tend to use while you're... Um, the rule of third is a good one. Yeah. Which gets like landscape, sky, evenly. There's the golden ratio technique where you have an off-center composition. There's many different techniques different that you'll get to learn. Okay, fab. And then what's the last project you do in... You start that in year 11, around December time? Cityscape. Cityscape, okay, so just fill us in a little bit on what Cityscape is. Cityscape is photos of like the buildings and people out and about. Yeah. Just like everywhere. So if I zoom in on your photograph there, John, just have a little look. So where was this taken, this John? This was taken on our nighttime trip to Liverpool. Yeah. Um, so was this. Yeah. So was this, but as we got there. Yeah. This is known as a light trail, where you use a long, long shutter speed. Yeah. So, in terms of photography then, um, is it something that you enjoy? Yeah. Photography is like the one lesson a week. I know I can come in, sit down, you can put your headphones in, and as long as you're doing your work, Miss doesn't have a problem with that. So in terms of, as well as photographing, what else do you do? So if you just want to quickly explain, very, very quickly with your files. You do portfolio, which is like where you learn about natural light and studio light and you make pages on them, which pick up your marks. Studio equipment, reflectors. So and then in terms of your work, how do you, how do you explain what you've done? You do before and afters. So you do before you've edited, after you've edited it what you've done to it, you basically write why you've edited it, why you've chose to edit it, and then what, what you've, you've done. done. Uh, you even plan for photo shoots because you can't do it without a plan. You need to know what you're doing before you do it. And that's where then the test shots come in then, don't you? Because yeah, then, you yeah. can, then you evaluate those in your file. Yeah, okay. And then this is, what's this one for, for this landscape? This is for landscape, so these are Lunt inspirational images and then you've seen the Lunt images before. Yeah. So, yeah. Brilliant. Everything well, thanks very much, John. Thanks for your time. So here you can see some of our students' photographs they have produced in response to close-up. There are lots of different skills involved in these photographs. 
you can see that they've used lots of water using fast shutter speeds and lots of technical settings on their cameras and different lighting techniques to produce the images. So on this slide, you can see these are examples of portraits, photographs that our students have produced. Basically, in a nutshell, portraits are photographs of people. They don't necessarily have to be self-portraits. They can be models that you bring in. So they could be friends or family, or they could be your friends in school. In portrait, we do a lot of focus on lighting and editing. This is where students tend to build their skills of using the studio independently and also manipulating photographs on Photoshop. I'd just like to add on this point that we do tend to delve into current affairs. We look into um, inspiration that might be on the news or it could be something personal to you in response to your photographs. So if this is where you can become very creative with your photo shoots. In year 10, we do a landscape trip every year. The location changes each year. Um, so on here, you can see there are some photographs of Wales. You'll see Crosby Beach and we also go to Formby. So it just depends each year we try and change the trips just to make it a bit more interesting. But here you are really concentrating on composition, which means how you put a photograph together and what's actually in it. So you're looking at the rule of third, you're looking at leading lines, you're looking at um, the goals and means. There's lots of different technical names for different compositional techniques to produce a stunning photograph. In year 11, around December time, we tend to take our students on a night photography trip to Liverpool. It's after school, obviously we've got to wait till it goes dark. And here you are experimenting with different shutter speeds. Again, really focusing on composition, looking at reflections, looking at movement within photographs to really boost your grade. This is a really, really good trip where you get outstanding results and we get some beautiful photographs on this trip. So GCSE photography is a coursework based course. There is an exam okay, at the end of year 11, but it is a practical exam. So your coursework runs right the way through from the beginning, as soon as you start year 10, you have started your GCSE, it counts towards your current grades. So you start in year 10 and that goes all the way through till year 11 and then around January time in year 11, you will get your exam paper and you will choose one question on that exam paper and then you then base your whole project on that and it is a practical, so it's a photographing and editing. So you have 10 hours in which to do photographs and editing, but not all in one go. And then that is your exam. So your coursework is 60% of your grade, which is everything you do right the way through year 10 and part of the way through year 11. And your unit two, which is your exam, is 40% of your grade. As you may have seen from some of the photographs, we do offer lots of different trips at GCSE Photography. Predominantly because they are controlled assessments, we need to make sure that you have the photographs in order to achieve your grade. So in year 10, we tend to, as I've said before, either go to Wales, we go to Formby, we've been to Lunt this year. So we do just try and mix it up a little bit. But again, we are constantly working on composition. And then in year 11, we do our night photography trip. In the past, we've also done trips to London and to Dublin, again, to enhance pupils' portfolio of work. As it stands, we've not been able to do any trips for the last couple of years due to COVID, but we are hoping to reintroduce those going forward. Can I just please reiterate though that you should not choose an option just based on a trip. Don't worry, it's not all serious hard work. Sometimes we do allow a little bit of fun. For those students who do go that extra mile, we do offer um, location shoots. So we take students out of school. Like, as you can see, we go to within the local community and um, we go to um, private properties. 
we go you know use your connections if you know someone who's got a good piece of land that you want to photograph on you know we will use that we go to public parks we even go to swim baths to photograph under water shoots we've literally done it all we've been on the docks you name it we've been there photographing so if you know that you've got good locations that you can use we're more than happy to go above and beyond for those pupils who work hard so here you can see some of the behind the scenes work so here you can see some of our really 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 high quality location shoots and um, you can see we've been to the beach to Crosby Beach we've actually been to the Wirral across the water uh, we've been to local parks some of them are on our grounds in the car park some of them um I, well you can even see on one of them where actually there's a train whizzing past that was at Seafall station so for us to consider taking you on a location shoot, you need to show us that you are dedicated to the subject, that you work hard and that you deserve to be taken out of school to do that shoot. So we do ask that students attend study support. That is where the majority of our outstanding photographs are produced. Here you can see some of the behind the scenes photo shoots that have taken place. You normally just see them presented as the finished product around school, but here you can actually see some of the, well, the crazy things that go on within the art and photography department. But again, it's all done after school. So all the big shoots are produced in study support. So if you're not prepared to give up the time after school, then maybe rethink taking photography at a GCSE. Hi everyone, my name's Miss Roberts and I work up here in the art and photography department. Um, I used to be an ex-pupil here at Liverland High uh, and left in 2012. Um, I did photography at GCSE along with a few others, but it definitely was my favourite. I then carried this on. Um, I got an A star in the GCSE um, and I went to Southport College after here. Um, done photography there and then went on to university to sort of higher level photography. Um, I then come back to the school and now we're here as part of the um, studio, I run the studio, I help um, kids and pupils and stuff, which I absolutely love. Um, there's so many careers you can go down in the photography route um, if you pick it at GCSE level. I've got loads of friends that have done it um, and in university. Some of them now work in Barcelona doing fashion. I've got a friend that has just signed for Pretty Little Things. She's now the um, website designer uh, and she does the photography there. So it's definitely a broad range of options that you can do. Um, I hope, hope so much that you um, come and join our course and lovely to have you around. Thank you. In year 11, once you finish your GCSEs, we print all of your images off and we display them on our boards. We then put them downstairs in the avenue and we have a huge art and photography exhibition. During this time, your parents are invited along, along with your teachers and some of our pupils, and it's a lovely way to celebrate how amazing you all are. The art and photography exhibition is a lovely way to bring people together. From the catering department to the music department, art and photography all come together and show off our creative students and how wonderful they are. Even Mr Jones, our site manager, has taken GCSE photography, got an outstanding grade. Well done, Mr Jones. <laughs> giving you a little bit of insight into the GCSE photography course offered here at Liverland High School. Remember, photography is a great way to show your creativity without drawing or painting. Within GCSE photography, you will learn the theory behind photography, develop your camera skills, produce written and practical work, which will go towards your final GCSE grade. You will also use Photoshop to enhance your images independently you will also be working independently within a professional photography studio using high definition lighting. And in year 11, you will have a lovely art and photography exhibition where all your friends and family will be invited to celebrate your achievements. I hope this helps. And if you've got any more questions, please speak to myself, Miss Hatton, Miss Baines, Miss Bell, or Miss Roberts for more information.